Welcome to another week with Alfred and Jamie. Um, just got back from my walk, and it's a bit of a y icky, kind of rainy day, but uh, it's not too bad, so I decided that I wanted to go out anyway. Um, and I had a lovely time. It was so, like, just nice and just, like, the weather was, like, nice and comfortable, even though it was, um, wet and, like, uh, but it was sort of, like, drizzly. It wasn't, like, really, like, hard rain, like, really at all, but, um, yeah, I went to the, uh, library, dropped off some stuff, picked up some stuff, picked up some great stuff. Uh, I went to the Jane and Dundas library this time, and, oh my goodness, for, well, th there's two levels to it. The bottom level is like the uh, the kids level or the teen level, and then there's the uh, main level. But for pretty much such a small library, the selection was amazing. I mean, I have to go back because I didn't, like, I picked up more, I want to pick up more stuff because <laughs> just the audiobooks, I restrained myself deciding not to pick up like I was going to pick up some audiobooks but then I decided not to because I still have audiobooks uh that I uh got from um the library that I still haven't listened to um not counting uh, audible but actual like audio books um and I still have those and so I was like no I'm going to I I need to like listen to the ones that I already have um, and their DVD selection was huge. And, like, I, I, I checked out, I think, from, like, R to, like, Z. I, somehow I ended up, like, looking at it, like, backwards instead of, like, starting from A. I, uh, started from Z onward. Um, so I got up to R, and then, like, I had, like, so many things that I was, like, I, I can't look anymore because I'm not going to be able to, like, bring all this back. <laughs> um, so I decided that the audiobooks that I was going to get, I decided, no, I'll, I'll save them for, like, another time. Um, because the, the, it was so good. So, like, I, next time I'm off and I'm going to the library, I'm going back to that one because I want to see the other stuff that they have. Um. But, uh, yeah, first let me do, oh, first, I have some crazy news in VC Andrew's world. Um, they are doing, Lifetime is doing Dawn. Her book series, Dawn. They've done Flowers in the Attic, they've done Heaven, uh, they've done Ruby, um, and, uh, they've done, like, I think some standalones, they've done, like, My Sweet Audrina, which I loved, um, and some people, they they don't like the Lifetime adaptations of V.C. Andrews books, I've loved all of them so far, so far, I've loved all of them that I've seen, they're doing Dawn, and the cast for this is insane, I don't know the girl who's playing Dawn, and I'm kind of glad that I don't, because, um, I, I like that, um, that for the most part, at least for me, the main, that the heroines have always been sort of unknowns. Like, with the exception of, I think, of Flowers in the Attic with Kiernan Shipka, who everybody knew from Mad Men, um, and then the older, uh, Kathy, Kathy, who was Rose McIver, I think, and I didn't know the actress who played the later Kathy, so that was, she was an unknown to me, but, um, for the most part, I didn't know the girl who played Heaven, and, um, I didn't know the girl who played the twins, Ruby and, uh, Giselle, and I don't know the girl who's playing Dawn, I don't, recognize her I don't think from anything else but the cast around her y'all we have 
the nanny, Brian Drescher. We have Donna Mills from almost every 80s miniseries ever. Her and Lindsay Wagner. Lindsay Wagner's not in this, but oh my god, if she was. Uh, so we have Brian Drescher, Donna Mills, Jesse Metcalf. Yes, that Jesse Metcalf from Desperate Housewives. And Joey Mother King McIntyre, y'all. New Kids on the Block, Little Joey Joe, Joey Mother McIntyre. Now, he's giving me uh, Jason Priestley vibes. Just, like, it was just like one shot. I don't know if he's bad or good, but the, the shot, it looks like he's bad. <laughs> but he's giving me Jason Priestley vibes. And the way that Jason Priestley blew me away in heaven, if Joey McIntyre is even half that good, which I know Joey McIntyre's music, obviously, from, like, it's on the block. But I haven't, and I know that he, like, he's a fantastic, like, theater actor, uh, but I haven't seen him really, like, on screen acting, really. Um, and I haven't been lucky enough to see him uh, in theater. But um, I know that he's, like, insanely talented, so I can just imagine, if he's even half as good as Jason Priestley was in heaven, Oh my god, I am so excited. <laughs> so, uh it's going to the air it's going to air the first movie I think in July. Early July, I think July 8th will be the first one and they're going to do all four. Um as they as Lifetime usually does. So, I'm so happy. <laughs> so excited. Um yeah. So, uh let's some um, reading updates. We have I am well, am I halfway? I'm not halfway yet. I'm almost halfway. Almost halfway through Kathleen E. Kathleen E. Woodowis's Shana or Shanna. And uh we have our darling Shana or Shanna and Rourke. And they are so in love with each other. Though neither one has admitted it, of course, to each other, because why would they? Um and they're just sort of sneaking around and just keeping it a secret from everybody. But now, entering the picture, we have some dude named Gaylord. Why would you name a person that is unfortunate? That's an unfortunate name. But he is sniffing around Shanna now uh, because he made a deal with that piece of shit, Ralston, who wants half of the dowry that he, that Gaylord would get if he married um, Shanna. And so Ralston is going to tutor him in how to win Shayna's hand in marriage. So that's sort of where we are right now. We have this Gaylord dude sniffing around Shayna. Rourke is of course not happy, but he can't do anything because he's supposed to be her dead husband. And he's supposed to be dead. Um, so he can't do anything. Shayna can't. <laughs> Shayna, like, knows that he's, like, that, um, Gaylord's, like, sniffing around her, and he's, she keeps, like, trying to avoid him, but women, manners, olden times, even, like, now, uh, God forbid a, uh, girl should, uh, be honest and tell someone, tell a man that he's not interested in her, because we all know how well men deal with rejection. Um, so yeah, that's sort of where we are right now. And, um, he hasn't proposed to her yet, this Gaylord dude, but it's coming. It's coming, and Shayna 
feels that it's coming and she doesn't know how she's going to get out of it. Um, and Rourke is not happy. And meanwhile, they're sneaking around having lots of sex. So, <laughs> there's that. Um, Rainbow Valley, I am still enjoying very, very much. Again, I'm sort of in the same boat. Not quite halfway, but almost there. Almost halfway. Um, we have, uh, what's-her-face, Mary, who, uh, the Smith kids found and uh, helped and uh, managed to get Miss Cornelia to adopt her. So now Mary is no longer uh, homeless uh, and on the run from her crappy uh, owner who luckily happened to die. Um, so now Mary is with Miss Cornelia and luckily enough, like, you know, she's, like, with them. She gets to stay in town and, 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 um, be friends with the kids. Um, she's still, like, not, but she's very, like, still not the nicest of little girls. But, you know, I, I see that, like, gradually I think she'll, like, um, warm become warmer and uh like as because it's sort of like her like defense mechanism is to be like rude and mean and uh she was really really mean to i think it was faith and i was ready to chuck that mary vance out the fucking window for how mean she was to faith but she apologized like she hasn't apologized yet but she felt bad about it i would like her to apologize for what she did, but they everything like seems to be okay. Um, and then there was this whole scandal about because uh, the town really picks on the Smith kids because their father is not the most um, attentive and involved kind of father, so he kind of just lets things go, and so like their house is like uh, just in like disrepair and like just messy and everything and they sort of like got this reputation of like their house is like a mess and they're you know the father doesn't really like pay any attention to things that he should and so they decide the kids decide that they're going to turn the town's repu uh, uh, opinion of them around by cleaning the house and making it all like spick and span and like all oh, like nice and everything and then but then the town it it backfires on them because they clean the house on a sunday and apparently you're not supposed to do that sunday is the lord's day now i remember when i was little that um Sunday was like everything was pretty much closed and you it was supposed to be you know you go to church if you're religious and you um you stay you stay home and you relax and you you know you that's your day of rest that doesn't happen anymore but yeah like no that doesn't happen anymore um because capitalism but I never like I know that, like, in the Jewish religion, that on the set they keep the Sabbath, you don't work on, you don't do anything on Saturday. Um, I remember when I worked in, um, in a hospital for Jewish elderly, and we would, on, if, if I was scheduled to work on a Saturday, we would even have to, uh, flip on the lights or like press the elevator buttons for for uh for the elderly because they are supposed to keep the sabbath holy like they don't work and that means like no work at all no exerting yourself sort of at at all that means no no turning on no driving no turning on lights no just, no so we would have to do that 
but I never heard of anything in like the Christian religion like is and, and like even like when I was little the Sunday like you were supposed to rest or whatever but you know you, you still like did stuff like you still like I remember cleaning and like that kind of stuff so I like I, I know they're either Methodists or they're Presbyterians and I didn't know if that was a part of that religion or if that still is a part of either of those religions but the whole hoopla happens and so the town is like s turns against them these poor kids and their only crime was that they cleaned on a Sunday because these poor babies thought that it was Saturday they got the day wrong that was their crime and listen as someone who has lived we can all live, relate through this, to this, as we have all lived through COVID times. We're still living in COVID times, because if you think it's over, you're stupid. But we have all, we can all relate to this. Where, when we were all in lockdowns, you'd be hard pressed to remember what day it was. Because you didn't have your routine to keep track of so i felt bad for these babies but she one of the i think it was faith or nan no, i think it was faith who god bless that little girl she got up in church and she's told everybody like what happened and hopefully they like believe her now and will like stop giving them like the side eye and like treat them better because those poor kids deserve it. Um, Mary, I think, has a little crush on Jem. So, interesting to see if that goes anywhere when they get older. And my favorite is still Walter. I, again, I love all the kids, but Walter has a special place in my heart. So, um, and I tried the uh i tried downloading an audible mary Jo putney's not quite a wife and i just i i couldn't get into it i just yeah i just it, I, I couldn't i'm nope that that one just did not grab me uh because like i i feel like i want to you know get into another um audiobook Hence me going and like almost grabbing some audiobooks from the library, but forcing myself not to because I still have ones that I haven't listened to yet. So I'm gonna see if I can, you know, listen to another one and maybe that one will grab me. So, um, let me show you what I got from this library. Oh, and, and even like their book sale rack was like amazing um they had like a lot again a huge selection but just not any that specifically like spoke to me that made me want to like give them my money but uh yeah huge huge selection get the turn of broadcast So, let me, first one is a Spanish telenovela, Amores Verdaderos, Spanish telenovela, and, and it um, translates to real loves, so, looking forward to that, and um, it's four discs, and I imagine it's a condensed sort of version. I think the last Spanish telenovela that I watched was the Amor Gabriel, Amor Immortal, with the hot vampire. I think that was the last one that I watched. And that one was so good. <laughs> that, um, 
yeah, this one, I don't think is any, there's no paranormal in this. It just looks like rich people with love problems. So, <laughs> looking forward to the melodrama. Uh, then we have this biography on Mae West, Dirty Blonde. Then we have the TV show Brotherhood. Now, I have here, funny, the second and third final season. I don't have the first season, but I remember watching the first season and absolutely loving it. And it stars Jason Isaacs, Jason Clark, Annabeth Gish, Ethan Embry, Fiona Erickson, and being, I'm gonna butcher this name and I'm so sorry, but I know that I know this woman, Fionula Flanagan. Now, that's her. And I will say to this if you are a lost fan, you know that this is the weird jewelry who Desmond met in his, uh, sort of flash, in the episode Flashes Before Your Eyes, in the episode where he tells Charlie that he's gonna die. This crazy was the one who sort of was telling him that he wasn't gonna marry Penny, and that like, she knew all about him, and all about like his future, and all this. And I know that in this show, she played the brother's mother. Now, Jason Isaacs, I know, has done, and is a very famous actor, and has done many, many different roles. But if, if you know Jason Isaacs, I guarantee you know him as the son of a bitch who killed, who killed Heath Ledger in The Patriot. That's how you know Jason Isaacs. I'm almost, like me, I can almost guarantee that 99% of you, that's how you know Jason Isaacs. He's the son of a bitch who killed Heath Ledger in The Patriot. So... I had seen the first season, and I loved the first season, but then I kind of lost track of the show. And it only lasted, I guess, three seasons. But um, yeah, I'd always wanted to get back to it. So I'm kind of hoping that I remember enough of the first season to be able to continue with and watch the second and third. So I decided that I would grab it, even though libraries are notorious for this. They'll have like one season of something and not the other, or like the second and like fourth, and like, but not the third and the first, and like just, they're not very like consistent in, in what they have of TV series. But I thought I'd give it a shot. So that's those two. Uh, then this documentary, Who Killed Lindbergh's Baby? I thought it was the guy who was executed for it. Um, but here's, you know, a conspiracy around it. And um, so if you're very interested in that. Then we have Sex Trafficking in America, which, you know, is a very horrible and just still going on today, right now, this minute. So definitely interested in watching that. Then for a more lighthearted documentary, we have Sex in the Wild, The Biology of Mating. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. So let's do it like they do it on the Discovery Channel. 
Comment down you down below if you know what that's from. Next we have No Man of Her Own with Carol Lombard and her husband, Clark Gable. And I believe this is the only movie that they did together. But um definitely looking forward to that. Next we have another classic, Now Voyager with Petty Date, excuse me. Betty Davis and Claude Rains. Love that hat, ma'am. Absolutely love that hat. Next, we have Ragtime. And I think it's, I think it's a mini series. If not, it's, well, it's 135 minutes. So that's almost, that's almost three hours. So I, yeah. And it's just the cast is just crazy. We got Mandy Patinkin, James Cag Cagney, Mary Steenburgen, Debbie Allen, Elizabeth Montgomery, Moses Gunn, Jeff Daniels, Fran Drescher, Samuel L. Jackson. So, oh my goodness, very much looking forward to this. What year was this? 1981? I didn't know it was that old. 1981. Yeah, I how did I not know about this movie? Ragtime. Is it based on the it's based on the best selling novel? But wasn't there a play called Ragtime? Wasn't there a musical? I'm guessing this isn't a musical, but limit. And speaking of musicals, Oklahoma. <laughs> I've never seen it. Um, but always heard of it, of course. Might react to it. I don't know, because musicals can be kind of iffy with YouTube, because you got, like, the film, and then you got, like, the music people who are like, no, you can't do that. So, we'll see. We'll see. So, that is what I restrained myself to getting <laughs> from the library. So, I, I only got up till like O to Z. I still have to see A to probably either N or more of O. <laughs> but yeah, so I next time I'm off, I'm definitely going back there and, and seeing the rest that they have. Um so today I'm going to be doing um because i did my reaction for son of the south the movie with lucas till and lucy hale i did my reaction for that last week so i'm sort of going to be putting that together for patreon uh i'm going to be editing uh my book wrap up um and i'm going to uh start getting uh wanted my historical romance up on amazon for uh, publication. So that's what we're sort of doing today. Um, I will insert sort of the, the cover somewhere here uh, that uh, we have for Wanted at the, uh, the front cover and the back cover. And it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll insert those somewhere here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get that ready to go up on Amazon, uh, going to edit my book wrap up, going to, uh, get my Son of the South reaction ready for Patreon. Um, the plan for tomorrow is to go to a value village, but I don't want to go to the one that's close to me. I want to explore a new one. I don't want to go to the one that's close to me. I want to go to a one that I haven't been to, so um, we'll sort of see what we find there. Because I need to get a new, uh, excuse me, I need to get a new frying pan. Because the one that I have, it's fine, 
but I don't like how I, I need the bottom to be like sort of like more flat because it's sort of it's a little bit curved and I don't it's kind of hard to like keep like if you're making eggs or something like they sort of like slide off to the side and I don't want that to happen I want them to stay like straight so that they sort of like cook more evenly um and yeah so I want to get a new frying pan um and yeah that's the plan and sort of we'll we'll see sort of like what dvds are there books probably <laughs> but um yeah so that's the plan for tomorrow and then friday will likely be my stay at home day and that is when i will record my book haul for the month of april um, yeah so right now i am got some potatoes cooking because i'm in the mood for mashed potatoes what's taters precious what's taters we're getting some mashed taters uh you can boil them mash them stick them in a stew I'm mashing them, and uh, with some chicken thighs. Um, so that's gonna be lunch, and yeah, so that's gonna be it for this clip. And uh, hopefully, I will probably come back, depending on what time I come home tomorrow. Get home tomorrow, but I will likely be back tomorrow with another uh, clip for you guys. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. So I didn't get to edit my book wrap up video because my editing software was being stupid. So hopefully I looks like I that I checked today and it seems that they're being like all right today and um yeah, very much uh looking forward to editing my book wrap up video today and uh, getting my uh son of the south reaction ready for patreon today and i am happy to announce that my historical romance wanted is now up on amazon the ebook is now available for amazon i will put the link to that in the description uh for you guys to pick up i will um grab the back blurb here for you So, I'm going to read the back blurb for you. The Civil War is over, and Mara, Ob Mara Aubrey has returned to her beloved home in Virginia to find that everything has changed. One change Mara does finds she doesn't mind at all is the addition of their new field hand, Colin Bodine, a sexy cowboy whose blue eyes hold the promise of pleasures Mara can't, an can't imagine. Mara is used to bending men to her will. Colin is used to women who revel in submitting to him. Has he finally met his match in met, met his match in the spoiled plantation owner's daughter, or is Mara brave enough to learn everything Colin wants to teach her? So, that is a, a historical romance, and it's got a touch of BDSM in it. Um, and the only other BDSM book that I had written written was uh, To Serve and Protect. That was my first sort of little. Uh, touch in the BDSM world and uh, Wanted has a little bit of it sort of as well. Wanted was previously published um, but I got the rights back to it and I sort of repolished it and just sort of um, sort of uh, just worked on it a little more and uh, just got it up for you guys now on Amazon and very excited about that. Now what we did today was we went to a thrift store to because I needed to buy a new frying pan uh, and I got that and I got a bunch of other stuff to show you so let's get to that so got the frying pan and it's definitely a sort of definitely more of a flat bottom and that's what I was looking for because the frying pan that I have now, it's the, t the, 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 um, the frying surface, it's sort of like curved a bit. 
and um, I just it 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 got to the point where it would like really sort of bug me because uh, I couldn't fry it sort of like as evenly as I wanted things to sort of fry, particularly eggs, because <laughs> they would sort of like just slide to the side, and I just that would just irritate me. So, um, and I remember my mom had one of these more uh, steel. Um, pans when I was younger and I remember uh, her using it a lot so I think this is gonna be better so that's what I got Let's see if I can move this over that'll fit there no it won't weather what weather wise it was really nice not rainy at all and I do believe the Sun is out now <laughs> finally uh, so, book-wise, we did some damage, and <laughs> I also got some uh, DVDs as well. I, like, all restraint sort of went out the window, so, we, yeah. First, I was very happy to have gotten Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Dumas. Now, um, I have the gorgeous paper mill press edition of this book. It was the first book that I've ever seen in the Paper Mill Press edition, and I absolutely fell in love with it, had to grab it. But that is not the edition that I want to annotate when I finally read this. So I needed to get one that was sort of more, um, or sort of less pretty, so that I would be able to mark it up and, and do all that fun stuff. Do so very happy. The big boy, he's a big boy. Let me see if uh, complete and unabridged. No kidding. Uh, let me see. We've got the oh no, it starts like right. Okay, okay, so there's the introduction. There's general introduction and then introduction. Okay, let's see. Into, oh my. And then there's historical note. All right. Bibliography. Okay. So then this is like the introduction stuff, and the novel starts there. <laughs> and then let me see. There's like the afterword and all that stuff. Notes. And then, yeah, there's, these are the notes there. And see that more clearer? Yeah, these are the notes. And then that's the text. So that's the Count of Monte Cristo. And I don't know, I don't think I have this book already, but I do know that it was one of the books that I read when I was younger. I don't remember anything about it, but I know that I've read this book because it definitely seems sort of right up my alley, and it's Leaves of Fortune by Linda Barlow. And it's one of those, like, women, you know, women epic saga, family secrets, like, matriarch has to leave the reign, surrender the reins of, the, of her empire to one of her heirs. So... Look at the, the inside of that. Like, oh my goodness. Oh. Prologue, Boston, 1730. Oh my. So this goes way back. Oh dear. So yeah, cannot wait to read that or reread it and refresh my memory. Then we have. Julie Garwood's Saving Grace, and it's a historical, one of her historicals, which I'm so glad about, because I know that she writes mostly romantic uh, suspense now, but uh, very, very excited for that beautiful cover. So pretty. Bring that, okay, bring it up now. Next is another of, uh, Andrew, Andrew 
Greeley, Andrew M. Greeley, Father Andrew M. Greeley, the one, the priest who uh, writes the saucy novels. Yeah, he's got a few. Thy Brother's Wife, which, no, no, that one did not work for me. Because um, the hero of that uh, revealed himself to be a homophobic douche nozzle. Um, then we have, he also wrote The Cardinal Sins, which I think is the one that I had read before. Uh, Ascent to Hell, Lord of the Dance, Virgin and Martyr. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward. This is Angels of September. Very much looking forward to reading this. And, uh, seeing if I can enjoy more of his uh, novels today, now that we know what you shouldn't be doing in a novel. And I had to get this one. I had to get this one because it's The Story Girl by L.M. Montgomery. And I don't think I have this one. I believe That it's about, yeah, I think I have something in this universe. It's, it's the sort of Road to Avonlea universe uh, where she, it's with a different heroine. Her name is Sarah. And um, it was a TV show on CBC. And I remember bits and pieces of it. I, I really should go back to and, and watch that uh, in its entirety. But yeah, we have. Yeah, I remember Felicity, uh, Cecily Felix, oh my goodness. Yeah, I remember Felicity falls in love with Gus, unless, but I don't see Gus in here. Unless they changed his name. But uh, yeah, I remember Gus Pike, Felicity and Gus Pike. I don't remember much about Rodan Lee, but I remember I shipped them hard. They were they were my OTP. So I really should go back to Rodan Lee and, and see sort of how that story played out. <laughs> and I think the rest are DVDs that I got. Now the first one I got just because I thought I would give it another shot. Because I remember Battlestar Galactica. I have, I loved seasons one and the first half of season two. I got PO'd and pretty much just occasionally watched the rest of the season in and out because I had lost my investment in my OTP, Starbuck and Apollo, Lee and Kara. Because for some reason, they decided that Kara was gonna fall in love with this random dude who shows up. Kara, who always had like fought her feelings for Lee because it was complicated, because she was engaged to his brother and then he died. And then, but Kara was like so messed up that she couldn't possibly like have like a real, like good relationship with someone. All of a sudden had no problem falling in love with this guy. What the hell was his name? Michael Truco played him. <laughs> but yeah, all of a sudden she was totally fine with loving him. And it just, it, pissed me off to no end because that like that should have been her and Lee they absolutely ruined that couple in my opinion and so much so that when I found out that Ron Moore or Moron as I like to call him was gonna be helming 
Outlander. I was, because I had convinced, I told myself that I would never go into any other production that that man was a part of. Because of the way he, in my opinion, ruined Battlestar Galactica. And then I found out that he was going to do Outlander. And I was pissed. But the saving grace for the most part of Outlander is that it's based on a set of already made, for the most part, series of books. So, for the most part, he couldn't mess with it too much. And he had other people sort of around him who were also uh, fans of the books. And I think probably kept him in line from trying to change too much. So that was the saving grace of Outlander. But for Battlestar Galactica, I was pissed when they uh, diverted from Lee and Kara to Lee and Duala for some reason. What they did to poor Billy! Billy deserved better! It should have been Duala and Billy, Lee and Kara. But no, they wrapped up those two pairings and put. Lee with Duala, which never made any sense, and Kara with Rand Xander? Was his name? Anders! Anders! His name was Anders. Sam Anders. Um, yeah. So th they put Kara with him, which made absolutely no sense. So, it's been. How many? When was this? 2007. It's been over 10 years, like 15 years. <laughs> it's been 15 years and I'm still bitter. <laughs> but I decided to give it another shot. Maybe this will just be a rage watch for me, but I decided to give it another shot. So this is season three. So I picked up season 2.5 because again, I love the show from season one. 2.1, 2.0, I guess. The first half of season two. And then from season, in the second half of season two onward, I was just angry. <laughs> so, and the final episode, in my opinion, made no sense. Why did I get this? Why? It's just gonna make me mad. So, well, here we are. <laughs> so, and I got some classics. Let me show you. What on the sheet? Yeah, and I'll show you this one first. I got not a classic, although the story is a classic, but this is a updated version that was made in 2004. Fan of the Opera. The Gerard Butler and Emmy Rossum version, which I had always known about, but I've never seen. Um, I might react to this, uh, but I don't know if YouTube will let me put it up because of musical. So, we'll we'll see. Um, and then the rest are a bunch of classic movies that I found. They had a good selection at this, um, at this thrift store. Um, the first is Shirley Temple in, and it's two of her movies. I think one is, oh, is it just, oh, no, no, it's, I thought it was two different movies. No, it's, it's one movie. It's just Bright Eyes. And, um, it's her, her number on the Good Ship Lollipop that she does. I thought that was a, that they were showing that the name of the other movie was on the Good Ship Lollipop, but no, that is the song that she sings in this movie. So it's one movie, Bright Eyes, Shirley Temple. She was freaking adorable, loved her movies. Next, we have The Incomparable 
Elizabeth Taylor in The Last Time I Saw Paris and Father's Little Dividend. I don't remember if The Last Time I Saw Paris, if I saw this movie already. I don't, I don't remember. I know Father's Little, Little Did, Dividend, I didn't. Because this is the secret sequel to Father of the Bride with um, Elizabeth Taylor, Spencer Tracy. Director Vincent Minnelli, I'm guessing the father of Liza Minnelli. Um, yeah, so there's two of hers here. Great. And oh, also not a classic, but a ch classic for my sort of generation Mighty Ducks! Mighty Ducks and Mighty Ducks 2. I love these movies. Um, I have a vague, I remember Mighty Ducks, the first one, definitely. I have a vague memory of, of D2, and I know that they did a third one. I think I've seen all three. Um, but yeah, Emilio Estevez, the adorable Joshua Jackson as little Charlie. Um, absolutely loved love this movie so i have one and two here now and the bells of saint mary's which i had always heard about but never seen starring ingrid the uh, gorgeous ingrid bergman and bing crosby Definitely looking forward to that. So that was a I did some damage there. Let's see what for so for today I am don't know what I'm gonna be watching, but I'm going to be making some rice and maybe teriyaki chicken because I have one of those um uh ready packets of like the the lose chicken with the sauce and like all you have to do is like heat up the bag and and then like I'm gonna put that like on some rice and that sounds really really yummy right now um gonna edit my book wrap up video and uh prep my son of the south movie for uh patreon and tomorrow will be my stay at home day where i will be recording my uh book haul book haul video and likely editing my last week's vlog for to go up on uh, hopefully Sunday. Um, and I got a little like tripody thingy so that I can hold so I can do my uh, tour my TBR. So keep an eye out for that video because that's going to be coming um, sometime down the line. Uh, when I get it all sort of done, and uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. I will I be doing some editing of Good Women today? I don't know. If not today, then tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be the plan for um, today and tomorrow, and I think that's going to be it. For this uh, week's video. So let me know if you've watched any of these movies or uh, read any of the books that I picked up today. And um, yeah, I will talk to you guys. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash author ejamie. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash author ejamie. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!